Well, thank you all. I couldn't ask for a better invitation. Uh, in fact, Lucas is wrong. I didn't create Galaxy Zoo. I created Foldit, but I'll take credit for it in front of you guys, too. So I'm going to talk about crowdsourcing science, the same thing that Lucas and Sarah were talking about. And I'm really excited about this idea that we can engage tens of thousands of people in the scientific process. And you'll see how far we can take that and how complex what people working on computers can do. So let me give you an example, protein folding. As you know, proteins are these beautiful molecules that fold into these complex and intricate shapes in each one of our cells. And formally, the protein folding problem is given a sequence of amino acids, which is the building blocks of proteins, we want to find the three-dimensional shape that they fold into. And that determines its biological function in the cell. Now, this is considered one of the gold standard problems in science, and it's really a key to understanding life at the cellular level. It also takes enormous computational resources to do on computers. But the protein that you see here on the right isn't being folded by some kind of supercomputer. It's actually being folded by an 11-year-old boy in upstate New York. This is a game which we created called Fold It, which allows players to compete and cooperate at protein folding. And in fact, this boy is one of over 400,000 folded players around the world who are cooperating and competing folding proteins. Let me give you another example, nanoengineering. So this problem is basically the reverse of the protein folding problem. In this case, the shape is known. It's something that we want to build. And we want to find a sequence of nucleotides. In this case, we're going to deal with RNA which fold into this shape naturally in a cell. And this is a fundamental scientific problem for creating next generation catalysts and drug responsive control elements. So it's a fundamental nanoengineering problem. We created a game for this too called Eterna. And the way it works is that players design RNAs on their computer. But it doesn't just end with computers. Every week, players vote for which RNAs they think are going to be most successful. And then my wonderful colleagues at Stanford synthesize, actually synthesize top player RNAs every week and send back the results to players as score and visual results. So this is a radical new concept for what a game is built around high throughput experimental science. And as you can see, we've in fact crowdsourced the entire scientific method from hypothesis through experiments to results. OK. Why would we engage tens of thousands of people in these kinds of problems? Well, it turns out that they're fantastic at it. So this is an example of a target shape which doesn't exist in nature. We call it a bulge star that we gave to our players. And these are actual experimental results of RNAs designed by Eterna players. We gave the same problem to the top computer program in the field, and this is what it came up with. All right, not as good. Now, the interesting thing is when we started this experiment, the humans, which are shown as these blue dots, uh, sorry, the red dots, uh, did about as well as the computer. And they were really all over the map. So higher is better, lower is worse. But through this cycle of experiment hypothesis result, experiment hypothesis result, the players learned rules of RNA folding, which no computer programs know. And six months into the experiment, the worst player design was better than the best computer design. So this is really exciting. And I want to give you guys a quick view of the future. Where are we going with this? Well, the first thing is we want to understand what the players are doing. So we're creating something called the strategy market, which allows the community with machine learning algorithms to identify those strategies that work best to create new folding rules. At the same time, we're massively increasing the experimental throughput of our system with new assays, which will allow us to test 20,000 hypotheses per week. And we hope that we're eventually going to get elite Eterna players to write and publish papers without us about their findings. Finally, we're developing new experimental methods and 3D user interfaces, which will allow players to design uh, thousands of working RNA devices and ultimately build a rigorous basis for next generation uh, molecular therapies. So I want to thank the unbelievable colleagues at the University of Washington, Stanford, and Carnegie Mellon who worked with uh, me on this. In particular, my graduate student, Ji Hyung Lee at Carnegie Mellon. And I want to finish with one really cool thought. 
When we think about crowdsourcing today, we often think about simple image and pattern recognition tasks. I think that Foldit and Eterna teach us that, in fact, people can solve much more complex problems online at the edge of human knowledge. And we've just scratched the surface. Thank you.